this one this is the one Not sure if you guys notice anything different, but something's missing. So I was leaving the tire shop, decided to smoke up the place a little bit, and um, yeah, I went to go hit the paddle to go in second gear. I guess I was a little, a little too excited, and boom. It came off. Recommended these paddles for a, a while now. I had no issues with them. I love them. I love the way they feel. And now that it's back off the steering wheel, I mean, I can give you guys another um, review. So it kind of fell off. You can tell it's glued on. And um, I hit the top of the paddle because I kind of like, hold on, because uh, one of the things I kind of like about the paddle is that it's so long so you could hit the top, right? Now, when I first got the paddle, it was obviously colder weather, and they weren't this loose. So, if I hit it right now, these three at the top, it will go into the next gear. However, you don't feel the click like you feel right here. See? That's because this side is loosening up as well. So, you see how flimsy it is? It was never that flimsy. It would just feel as firm as right here. Uh, this same thing happened. Hit it from the top. Boop. And uh, yeah, I kind of noticed something was funny, but I'm like, ah, maybe it's my imagination. And I went to go hit it again, and it came completely off. You can see right here, it's still here and it still works. Um, so uh, give that a shot. In other news to this BMW update, I finally got the winter tires off the car, the Vredsteins off of the car, swapped it for summer tires. You can see there is some damage right here to the Autoflex. Uh, Nick right over here and mind you none of this stuff I've seen I didn't see any of this stuff before uh, this right here either have to get them redone or just accept how they look now the reason why I say I'm pretty sure it's just an error or a mistake with the tire shop itself that side they changed first then they moved over to the passenger side which has no markings on it at all so I guess once they made enough mistakes and scratched up the driver's side auto flex they kind of realized we got to be super delicate with this stuff because they did a good job on the passenger side now I'm not gonna go back to the tire shop and complain or whatever it is what it is what I can say is they didn't have a tire machine that's like a touchless one. Maybe I get an idea, hit up Phil, and we change the color all over again, everything, maybe from gold to black, from black to bronze, from whatever, I don't know. Well, first I wanna say now we're in about April, I purchased this car in October 2020. I want to say, give or take maybe a month or two. I really don't remember, but I think it's October. I gotta go back into the videos and check. Found this car in Rockville for a pretty decent price. I was looking for a rear wheel drive car. Three BMWs and every single one of them has been rear wheel drive. I've driven the all wheel drive versions of those same cars. And I just felt like, you know, the dynamics really weren't there, uh, especially what I'm used to now. Uh, I noticed X Drive cars tend to understeer a lot, which you don't get in these cars. It just has like a more hunkered down feel, uh, better steering feel, in my opinion. There's a couple other things. Now, you do need to change the tires during the time, obviously. Rear wheel drive cars tend to not do well in the, uh, in the snow or, you know, even terribly cold weather with summer tires. Actually, online, I looked at the blue, really wasn't a huge fan of it. A great relationship with Philip from Pro Dipper, so y'all already know how that was gonna go. My whole mindset was who cares what color the car is, it's gonna get auto flex anyway, um, and Phil's gonna take care of me. He did the green, he did the gold grills, and he's gonna work on any color change in the future. Uh, I like auto flex over wrap to each his own. Only thing though is the blue would kind of like shine a little bit. So if I wanted to do like, let's say a crazy green, you open the door and the jams would be kind of blue. That's that's probably my, that, that's pretty much like the only gripe or negative side about the whole situation. If I would have gotten black, it would have made more sense or like silver, like uh, the 435. But um, 
but not a big deal. If anything, uh, now he does the door jams and everything. So complete color change could have been, uh, you know, in effect. It wasn't until I went to take a look at this car in person. And even then I wasn't completely sold on the blue. It looked really, really nice. And I kind of considered like, yo, even in stock form, I, I, you know, my mind started working a little bit on it. I kind of juggled a couple ideas in my head. Like, you know what, this will go good with the boom. And maybe I can hit it with this. So I was like, all right, I, I'll work with it. So then I had Yuri over there wipe it up detail. He went ahead and did, you know, a uh, full buff, polish, paint correction, whatever you call it. And then he went and ceramic coated the car. I'm telling you from that moment, I picked the car up. I didn't even want to drive it. The car was beautiful, immaculate, not one scratch, swirl, anything. It's like freaking glass. And that's when I fell in love with the blue. That's when I, the vision came through. I'm like, listen, the blue is where it's at. Now, there's only really two colors I like that the M340 come in now. They're all decent, but the two, my two favorite ones is like a gray that uh, one slow M340 has. I'll kind of tag it in there. Hopefully you don't mind me using a picture of your car on IG. Uh, and my car, the Portimire Blue. I think his might be the David Gray or David Gray. Don't quote me on that. Color is like, I think a perfect combination between the San Marino, which is like my favorite blue BMW makes, and like the historic blue, right? Somewhere kind of sort of in the middle. We all know how powerful the B58 is and the potential of the platform. This B58 is just a little bit different, lower compression pistons. That's how I'm able to run such high pound, uh, high amount of boost, you know, especially stock turbo. You know, if you're running 30 pounds of boost or you can't even get that high, but if you run like, you know, mid twenties on stock turbo and M55s, it's pretty much extremely inefficient, builds up a lot of heat and we're not gonna get into that. But uh, this motor, you know, this whole setup is extremely, extremely robust. It can take a lot of beating and the suspension handles good. Every part of the car, the steering feels good. It's just a great, great car in my opinion. C43s can't compete. Um, S4s can't compete. It's competition is like the next level up, you know, C63s in my opinion, and RS3 or RS4 in my opinion. So we're comparing full-fledged V8 um, AMGs and full-fledged RS mod model Audis to a sub M model. Now, even though uh, now even though this is second to Mercedes in uh, interior quality, don't get me wrong. I've driven this car from New York to North Carolina, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia, and Maryland. Obviously, Maryland a bunch of times. And I'll tell you straight up. This car is a very pleasant place to be. I have no complaints about it. Feels pretty comfortable. Seats are pretty good too. I haven't had any issues, no real problems with the car. It has been to the dealer one time and that's for an oil change. And I wanted to get the rear diff checked out and told me that everything is good. Now it took them some time to tell me that nothing was wrong. Uh, what I can assume is that there probably was something wrong and they had to fix it or correct it. Uh, they gave me a loan in the car, you guys remember that, but it was absolutely free. It didn't. If you guys have been following the channel, I mentioned there is a rear diff issue where it leaks out of the weep hole. BMW has already uh, figured out a fix for that, and so has John Visconti. He has like a little kit back there to, uh, I guess, reroute the weep hole so it doesn't leak. The oil change was not free. It actually cost me about $125. BMW Freeport uh, kind of um, gladly explained to me that it is one of the cheapest ones you can get anywhere, uh, all cars, I guess, whatever. I'm pretty sure BMW put 0W20, which this car recommends, into it. If you guys plan on tuning or anything like that, you might want to run a little bit of a thicker oil in there. That's just been like, a thing in all bmws they tend to burn oil and this one being the 2020 brand new one i'm here to tell you that it doesn't change i took a trip to charlotte north carolina and i needed about a quart of oil before i even left now what i will say is it probably burns about a quart of oil every oil change so you only really have to refill it once still has zero w20 in it and i still push it on the e50 tune by mike body Put in the comments below if you think I'm crazy. You buy brand new or you buy used or old or whatever, somehow, some way the oil is gonna make it out of that car. Now, whether it makes it on the driveway or just burns through turbos or valves or whatever, I have no clue, but uh, just know that it happens. Say it caps out maybe around 163. Uh, don't ask me how I know. And tuning will take that even further and you can just go to the moon. 
fastest side went was about 181 in this car and that's a speedometer so i would say about 174 real life gps speed one of the biggest 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 things uh, that really draws up a lot of emotion and hate and complaining is when a car company changes the body style not really like your kias or your hyundais or anything like that i don't think no one really cares too much about those things but something along the lines of bmw porsche uh, not even really mercedes but uh BMW and Porsche I've noticed the most. Whenever Porsche or BMW would change the body, everyone would hate it. And I really didn't understand where that hate comes from. Uh, I can see it a little bit kind of with the sides, you know, the door handles. It doesn't look, really look as aggressive. And from some angles, you kind of would mistaken it for like a Lexus, right? You know it's BMW when you see it coming up. The rear end is the same. The sides, the sides kind of get me. It's never like an in thing right here. And I think that kind of threw it off the body it looks like some of the really sharp edges on the f chassis cars are like gone and replaced with smooth out edges but all you need is spacers on this thing and it'll bring out the rear end crazy uh, i did lower it a little bit on dining suspension i will say this thing rides really really good and it looks really really good you don't get the really flat smack slammed out coil over a bagged look however you get the functionality and the drivability of stock suspension which if you get the adaptive is a hundred percent worth it the car is so smooth and comfort and so responsive in the sport and sport plus settings I'm not sure it's because I got the rear wheel drive model and the suspension can be a little bit different. The cars sit a little bit lower from the factory as well, rear wheel drive models. Um, this car drives so good. This car also has some safety tech on it. It's a little bit annoying. It has like a lane departure thing and this, that, and a third. And I will say, uh, the roads aren't 100% perfect, but the system will treat the car like the roads are perfect. So sometimes you'll see yourself going into another lane or might not even really be another lane and the car will kind of jerk you and the steering wheel will push you back it thinks it's helping but sometimes it's a little bit annoying there is a setting that you can change inside to kind of limit uh what specific intelligent safety features are activated or you can just hold it and disactivate everything now in the event that one of the sensors are blocked you will get a message on the heads up display and the screen saying driver assistance reduced it'll point to you what sensor is actually being blocked i've noticed and i'm not exactly sure if it's my car specifically but i had a problem with a sensor right here like i said it'll tell you if it tells me one more time i'll try to capture a picture pull it up and um relay it to you guys sometimes it's kind of hard because these things just pop up in the blue kind of like when the paddle shifter broken off i wish i could have caught that on film uh and the donuts that i was doing but uh just it just couldn't happen and it is what it is my barber actually told me that today, that it looks closed. And I'll, older BMWs, my F10 had the same thing where the grill's closed. It was just harder to notice because it was more inside. This sits right out here in the front. So when you start it up and the car warms up, the grills do open, they are electronically controlled. Other little interesting quirks about this car, and it kind of ties into the cooling system as well, is that this car actually sounds a little bit dieselist. Now BMWs, kind of went that way the n20 sound like a freaking diesel um i think the b48s kind of sound diesel is too but this motor right here sounds like a diesel you can even hear the turbo spool almost like a diesel bmw borrowed the block uh from uh bmw motor i think it might be the n57 don't quote me on that but the b58 a powerful and potent has a closed deck block borrowed from a diesel motor and if you guys understand diesel motors that are in your trucks they need a lot of torque so, which is the perfect recipe for these motors because well you have a lot of boost in them at a fairly low rpm and they take it and they keep turning and turning out loads and loads of torque without needing to be rebuilt and everything like the n55 they can take a real real big punch this specific model, I know it sounds dangerous, but coolant does not pump through the block in order to heat the block up faster. It's like a diesel trick. Then when the car warms up, coolant flows through both. Now, I see that going wrong too, but hey, if the car doesn't blow up, then it is what it is. I haven't had any issues with the car. Typical BMW issues, you will have to replace your tires a lot sooner than the manufacturers recommend, and you will have to fill this car up a lot sooner than manufacturers recommend. I'm not sure if it's because I have a lead foot, but one thing I will tell you is this car drinks gas like crazy. Now, driving very aggressively, I can get about two days on a full tank of gas, uh, really pushing it with my boys, you know, probably get a tank a day. 
driving around commuting i really can't answer that too much because i really don't because i don't use my car to commute for the most part if i were to i would say you can get about a week on a tank you just have to be mindful keep the car in eco or comfort mode and i think you'll be fine it's just really really hard to drive this car slow because it just goes fast so effortlessly and by yourself say and i'll sit down in the car for that is this is a pleasant place to sit bmw finally put some decent looking stuff in this car in the beginning i think i've told you guys i really kind of didn't like it it seemed a little bit overwhelming but we're gonna go over here to reduce mode so what that does is i'll click it again reduce mode it'll show you the speed and not really rpm so you can rev up the car you see it has a needle that moves but for the most part everything is like it says reduced it'll just give you important information signal for lane change and things like that I would recommend something like that uh, um, now now the iDrive I kept telling you guys and I told myself one day I'm gonna sit down and dive into this whole iDrive unit I think it might be iDrive 10 I've still yet to do that let's click the Apple CarPlay uh, we're gonna go right here and boom that's pretty much all I need you know I'm a simple guy I like how my iPhone layout is is perfect for me and boom this is perfect as well I like that it's touchscreen you can also use the knob but like I say touchscreen really 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 does help I sit kind of far back so a little bit of a pain to get to the screen but if I were to drive like a normal human being it'd be perfect I uh, download a spot hero but all of these stuff like this like WhatsApp that's interesting uh, I've never checked anything like that I would love to see how that is integrated or certain apps are integrated into the cars um, car play feature uh, but nonetheless here you go uh, this is the car play setup let me go back home and let me go back home and boom there we go this is little widgets you can set up here for your phone traffic really nice I'm in little neck right now 66 degrees 12 percent chance of rain you have the news now I don't really care for news too much I think it's whatever that's just another opinion uh, but uh, nonetheless is here it reads it to you i like reading I, I like when it reads it to me it just feels like i bought a really nice tesla or something like that uh sports displays which is very interesting as well right so bmw really done away with putting the oil temp on the instrument cluster which i prefer i really love it because in my opinion that's when you know your car is truly warmed up by the oil temperature and not just the coolant temperature especially bmw doing its trickery to warm up the block by circulating coolant through the head only first uh, but nonetheless right here still got and it's still going up you still have your oil temp which which i mean it doesn't really fluctuate too much so it's not that hard it's not that uh difficult to glance over and see how you're doing you'll notice oil temps to go up when you're really beating on a car not really zigzagging in traffic and stuff like that but like spirited spirited driving through the cans going up and down and stuff like that i've noticed that temperatures can go up and that's just another way to monitor them you have your boost up here really don't pay attention to that uh, it kind of goes all over the place my car makes more than 20 pounds of boost at the moment so this is pretty much useless i mean i can kind of tell when the car is limiting through like wheel slip one thing i will say about this car is it has a smart traction control system bear with me here uh if you spin the first couple of times the car will kind of learn that and not spin again it will limit the power so traction control wouldn't come on but if you look at this screen it wouldn't give you full boost either until you get into the next gear or even the next gear after that uh, if you have your G meter, which a lot of people like looking at, um, pretty much don't really care about it. And horsepower and torque readings. Uh, once again, my car makes more than 400 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque by a lot. Uh, that is pretty useless. I don't even pay attention to it. Uh, it was pretty cool when they had the gauges I prefer in the F chassis cars, but now it's just a bar and even like, I guess, more gimmicky than before. Back out of here. Now, these are all widgets. You can access them from somewhere else. The fuck was that? Uh, calm. This is like phone stuff. I don't really care about that. Main thing I would say, settings. I don't really even I, I don't even use the navigation uh, on the original BMW on uh, the original BMW navigation, which does suck because when you do, it shows the directions in the heads-up display, whereas Apple CarPlay does not that's a it's a pet peeve um this stuff i'll show you tire pressure monitor now you can go in tire settings manual so 
I want to do automatic. Wait, oh, when you do automatic, you have to do this. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. So I have winter all year, so I'm going to tell the car it has summer tires back on it. I'm going to tell them it wants to know, do I have 18s or 19s? So I wish Apple CarPlay can integrate the directions into the display, but that's another story for another day. Wow, car looks really weird with just one paddle. Gotta get the super glue on there. God, no. Now this car is not spec with the laser guided cruise control or anything like that. Hey, listen, I don't really care about it too much. I would do without this. And this is what I was kind of explaining to you guys. This um, intelligent safety, you see how I'm an individual one uh, system is deactivated and that one I'll go into configure is the one that I kind of complained about the steering intervention perfect roads perfect lifestyle it's not bad you know you signal you can get in and out of the lanes if you swerve it'll kind of ping pong you back into the lane it won't exactly slowly steer you back in it'll kind of yank the wheel I guess wake you up a little bit it will vibrate the wheel as well uh, I disabled that you can disable it all by just holding it and releasing it and it'll go all off you see right here you can't really turn it off you have to boom hold for three seconds now I'm not gonna do any of that mess with my settings like I already messed up my settings over here I don't like the way the kilometer thing looks on the bottom but whatever one of the things that I'm super glad that BMW kept are these number things right down here a lot of people who don't like it they think it's a little too old and I only use one of them right now but I still like it you know I use two I think that's what it is too uh, so for when I want the car completely dark so you turn off your headlight button right here which BMW has replaced the knob for a set of buttons which is pretty pretty interesting uh, you can't turn it off while driving you won't uh, it won't allow you uh, I don't want to explain why I needed the lights turned off while I was driving, but I just did I completely turn all of this off But you have to go into the settings to turn like the angel eyes or whatever you call them on this car off So I had it set to two you scroll down daytime driving lights boom you turn them off and there you go No lights on the car whatsoever uh, seats everything pretty comfortable they held up pretty well through the mileage and I'm the type of guy where I actually use my car if the seats fold down I will fold them down and shove some tires in there that's just how it's gonna work uh, the steering wheel looks pretty dated already I have about 25,000 miles in this car and the steering wheel I wish I would have taken you guys advice and not driven and eaten and had greasy hands and this that, and the third because uh, you do notice it other than that pretty pretty solid everything feels good I really like I can tell a difference and I really like the solid door clunk is back in these cars I feel like F chassis cars they a little bit tinny compared to the E39 and stuff like that now it's not as solid as the E39s I will say but you got the thick glass and uh, you roll up the windows it's not exactly dual pane laminate in the middle like you'll get in the c300 or something one of the first things that i recommend you guys do if you buy the m340 is disable the fake sound the car actually sounds pretty good out the box and i don't think something like that is necessary actually the car sound more race car-y like video game-ish but i think the natural sound of the exhaust is pretty good uh to just have that running i don't think a lot of people really notice it but for those who do they care right you care if you could take anything from this video I'm not I know I'm not the greatest at explaining stuff especially this ownership stuff this car is amazing and I have a video coming up soon the one shortly after this uh, whether or not you should get this or the Supra and I'm pretty sure you guys will like what I have to say but this car is amazing you don't need more than this this is dope even non-modified these cars are amazing they handle they hold boost they take power speaking of holding boost and taking power i will pop the hood now i haven't really popped the hood in a long time so bear with me it's pretty filthy from when i bought the car i gotta go down here and do some scrubbing and some wiping down there's no front mount in a cooler there's no inner cooler down there so with that being said boost hits differently because it goes straight from the turbo which is down there 
through this charge pipe, which is 100% stock right now, guys, and into the charge cooler. Which Many people ask me, have I upgraded my charge pipe? Do I need to upgrade my charge pipe? The answer, the short answer for that is no. I'm pushing 505 wheel horsepower and 605 pound feet of torque. And I will tell you, I do not need to upgrade my charge pipe now. And I probably never will staying at this power level. Now, one of the main issues with the M55 and the charge pipe setup, motors move, motors twist. When you rev them, they twist, they generate torque and it twists. The intercooler was integrated and bolted onto the chassis. The chassis does not twist. You have a plastic piece connecting one twisting part to one that is not twisting therefore it therefore you're constantly twisting the plastic itself causing it to grow weak and several hot cold cycles in boost not in boost it'll tend to blow even stock it goes from the turbo to the throttle body straight line now the turbo is bolted onto the motor so when the motor twists the turbo twists which means this piece right here does not flex at all. The only thing it does is just move air from here to there, which makes it a lot tougher. When you get down here, you have a lot more room as well. The turbo is visible. In fact, the turbo comes out the top on this motor, which will allow for a lot easier install of an upgraded turbo or things of that nature. If you do a big top mount, which I ain't gonna lie, it might be in the plans, this will remove, which is the intake. Everything is super simple and right here, shortly float in. The M55, they started over there. Now I would assume maintenance would be a little more frustrating uh, dealing with a air to water setup versus a air to air. Maybe fluids need to be changed. However, I've only owned the car for six months. I'm giving you guys my six month owner um, experience and I've had no issues with that, no leaks. I've heard things, but nothing. Cars tuned nothing i'm pretty good to go now given the driving that i do i have noticed by looking at them visually my brake pads are a little bit on the low side i will have a video showing you guys how to replace the brake pads on this car pretty pretty easy straightforward uh, there's no real trickery with it actually you don't have to take off the calipers if you have the m sport brakes or anything like that i'll show you guys they're pretty pretty dope uh, simple to change as well but yeah i love the car that nice solid door clunk, I love it. You know, I don't think you can beat it. You can drive it, take it to the grocery store, you can drift it around the track, you can race it around the track, you can drag race and beat a lot more cars than you think. And um, I don't know, it just looks good while it's doing it. I think once again, once again, I wanna say this is one of the best cars out here that you can get and I highly recommend it. So with that being said, Mike from Soul Speed, I'ma get up out of here and uh, yeah, get you guys this video. Peace out. Uh, that intelligent safety thing is not always bad, you know. Sometimes when we shouldn't be on this, but we are, and there's a car in front of you, this thing does let you know what it, it gives you just the amount of time to brake. Like, if you hear it beep and you slam on the brakes, you'll be all right. But if you ignore it and don't pay attention, you're going to end up behind this truck. And when I say behind this truck, I don't mean behind it like how I am I mean you're gonna be sitting in the back seat